Pottag number 67. We've got a few problems in this. We have real long phrases, we have wide leaps and slurs, and then we have to think about rhythmic precision. One of the things that we can do is practice nice, deep, relaxed breaths so we can make sure that we are filling up our lungs completely. One of the things that you can do is breathe through your nose slowly for eight counts, get a feel of a complete lung full of air, and then exhale in a nice controlled movement for eight counts, like this. so forth. So get the feeling that every nook and cranny of your lungs is being filled up with air. I'll get my metronome going here in just a second. My handy metronome app. Okay, now before we start I want to establish a good tempo. This is around 65. I would consider 63 to 65 uh, as, as good tempo choices. Make sure that you have good timing. In listening to people practice such music, I find that the majority, I'll turn this off for a second, I find the majority of the people get lost in long notes. They either hold them on too long or, more commonly, they hold them too short. It's a fatal flaw in auditions. Play every note great, but at the correct time. So if we put our metronome back on, what I recommend is play all the subdivisions. Play everything legato. But. <laughs> so that when you play normal, you will hear that subdivision in your head so that you'll exit and play the remaining melodic notes in the correct time. Another thing is to play the horn when you think that all the notes that you play are on the same plane. You're not going high, you're not going low, so as you go higher in the pitch spectrum, you're actually not thinking high, you're thinking the note is out more in front of you, like you're reaching for the note, whether you know, you're casting a line or fishing or you're trying to, uh, trying to play tennis and hit the ball in the far corner, you're directing the ball or the object, or in this case, the air, so that we're not thinking about squeezing the aperture together to play higher notes. We're keeping the same aperture, but only we're using a little bit more energy. Now, one of the things that uh, I'm going to show you here occurs in measure seven, where we have the ascent to the A flat. One of the things that you can do to help you with upper, uh, upper leaps is to bring out the first note or the lower note of the interval make it feel like a trampoline. So you're, you're landing on that and then you just soar off and get the A flat. Notice when I played the A flat, I played its third, second finger that is a preferred fingering for several reasons. First of all, it's a little less resistant. It's a shorter tube, a little bit easier to get. Secondly, it's a little flatter in intonation. 
In this case, that flat A, or that flat A flat, is, uh, is a little bit more in tune uh, according to the tonality or the chord that that's outlined. So uh, there's a couple of, of advantages for using that second A. So if you think about those tips, you should have a lot easier job successfully negotiating 67. Now, let's hear it perform. Mm -hmm. 